Well, friends, welcome again. A few words for you on a Friday as we are preparing and getting closer to the Lord's Day. As you know, as we are striving to keep ourselves all together in one service at 10 o'clock each Lord's Day, rather than splitting up over two services, there would be something to be really helpful and perhaps ask you to be even a little more considerate and, and to some degree a little more diligent about this aspect. Please reserve your seat in advance. You know, Catherine Avery does such a diligent job and a, a kind job, frankly, on behalf of our church family to have not only arranged for that reservation service, but really she monitors and checks it and is constantly shifting things around, sometimes upwards till midnight on Saturday evening. And then Florence is here early on Sunday morning, constantly making adjustments and changes. You know, the less of that we, had, we would have to do, the better. The, the ladies are, are flexible and, and gracious and understanding that way. And this is not coming from them. It's really coming from us as the leadership. And, and I know some of you are thinking, we got it. We know, Pete. We, we've been doing that for months now. Well, the fact is that some of us have been doing it for months. And it's the same message, but it's not always getting to the same people, or at least not with the same focus or with the same intensity. The reality is that we are hopeful that as people come, we know that they'll have a place to sit. Now, part of that requires us to have some of us go down into the basement and have this kind of a Facebook Live feed live in the basement so that we can be in the, the building at the same time. And so it'd be really helpful if you went to downsviewbaptistchurch.com, just click on the slider that comes right across the bottom of the web page, or let me know. Let, let someone else at the church know who's doing it. We can help you do that. If, if the website is, is confusing or not as easily accessible as you might like, um, just let us know and we'll be able to help you get that seat reserved. And frankly, if you know that you're not coming, but you have a regular place reserved, it's also helpful if you let them know that in advance. Now again, we're not trying to be curmudgeonly about this or anything, but what we are trying to do is to give a degree of consideration and, and helpfulness and be helpful to those who are uh, giving of themselves to organize us coming on a Sunday morning. And again, I appreciate your cooperation that you guys have been so understanding when it's like, well, it's your turn this week to go in the basement. I mean, reserving a spot doesn't mean that's your pew no matter what happens. We, we want to, in, in the spirit of Philippians chapter 2, that in humility consider others better than ourselves and that we would be willing to give that up or to, to sort of sit in the basement once in a while because other people are being rotated through or to sit, even some folks in the foyer, as we know. And so we appreciate you doing that overwhelmingly it's gone really well but as our numbers come up as you were excited that you keep coming back we get more and more people uh, on a consistent basis and we really do want to try to stick together in one service in one building and part of that comes out of a conversation that i had this morning i as you know i'm from thunder bay northern ontario and one of the pastors there my buddy chris vieira from calvary baptist church in emo emo is uh, down as far as highway 11 as you can go or young street if you think of it that way just in the far western end of ontario and chris organized a conference call with tim challies You've heard me mention Tim Challies before, a gentleman who I appreciate his ministry very much. He has an online presence and blog that he's a very helpful and a gentle spirited gentleman. He is an elder at one of our sister Fed Central churches here, Grace Fellowship Church in Rexdale, not all that far from us, close to where Pam and I live actually. And Tim was able to gather with us and about uh, 10 pastors or so from Northern Ontario and alumni like myself and another buddy out on the East Coast and to get together to talk about this period of transition and what's it going to look like as we come back together. And, and part of the conversation began to take on the flavor of what does it mean to assemble again as a church? And you know, one of the realities of the very concept and term and 
you might even say description, if not definition of the church, is a gathered assembly of legitimate and genuine believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not just a uh, disconnected group of Christians who are all part of the body of Christ, the small C church, or you might say the big C church, that we're all part of the body to be sure, the ecclesia that we've been called out of the world. And, but that calling out of the world is, is an into uh, a gathering and a committed group of folks together. We are on the 5th of December, as you know, following up from our baptism service next Sunday to bring in Ariane and Chester Hernandez, as well as Agshea, as members of our church. And there are a couple of other folks who are in the queue right now. I, I met with one of the folks on Wednesday evening uh, during our prayer meeting to speak about this idea of covenant partnership, which is really the best way to describe what church membership is, or at least the best way that I've come up with to describe it. A covenant, of course, is a deal. It's an arrangement. It's agreed upon arrangement by two different parties to agree that we're going to enter into this relationship together. That's why marriage is often called the covenant of marriage. That do you, do you, we do, okay, we agree. On that basis, we pronounce you husband and wife. You're entering into a covenant voluntarily together. But then covenant adds to partnership that there's something we're partnering together to accomplish, and that is the enjoyment of the gospel, that's the proclamation of the gospel, and that's the propagation or the sharing of the gospel. So we have covenanting together to partner together in the ministry of the gospel. And one of the ways that we describe that here is that we are not just a community of Christians, but we strive to be a committed community of Christians. And part of that commitment involves financial uh, support of the church. It involves a willingness to fellowship and pray together. It involves service to the church. But you know, at the bottom line, it involves gathering, assembling, coming together regularly with our people to whom we say we are committed and we want to show that commitment in our gathering which means at some point this kind of interaction over the internet is not the best or not the highest thing that we're striving for. The best and the highest expression of our commitment to Christ and to Christ's people, therefore, is the gathered, to, gathered assembly and assembling of God's people. You know, in the second chapter of the book of Acts, we often look at that text as a passage which uh, has much to say about baptism and we referenced it even last Sunday and surely we will next Sunday. In Acts chapter 2 verse 36 the Apostle Peter ends this this Pentecost empowered sermon that to let every all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ this Jesus whom you crucified. And verse 37 goes on, Now when they, that is those who heard this, this proclamation of truth, those who were listening, now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what do we do? What shall we do? What do we do in response to all of this? Okay, we're convicted. We're guilty. We, we recognize that. It's, it's our fault. We did this. We are culpable. Now what do we do? Verse 38, Peter gives the beautiful promise of the gospel. Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You will receive the sign, the seal, if you will, of belonging to Christ. And that is the indwelling, having been baptized into or immersed into Christ, baptized into receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. For this promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God called to himself. And what did they do? Okay, we're in. We believe, we repent, we'll be baptized. And the text says they went on and lived their lives on their own because they were part of the big C church. Of course not. Look down to verse 41. And those who received his word, received is a, another word for believed. You know you've, you've believed it if you've received it, but you know you've received it if you actually live it out and act on it. And it says, those who received his word, number one, were baptized. 
And there were added that day about 3,000 souls to their number. There were added to their number about 3,000 souls. The ESV excludes the word number. I'm not sure why. It's clearly there in the text. And then it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles, and all who believed were together and had all things in common. Friends, that's not a text about a bunch of independent believers doing their own thing because it's either easy or convenient or frankly it's good enough or close enough and yet having this groundbreaking or rock solid assurance that oh of course on the other side of my last breath I'm going to live and reign with Jesus and his people and then live in, in eternal joy in heaven with him no no as we said on Sunday, salvation is never by your works, certainly by the work of God. But when we say salvation is not by works, that's true, not our works. But assurance of salvation is always by our works, always by we live. The way we live, as one theologian says, the assurance of our Christian life is a changed life, is a new life. Is that my life is different and it's changed in relation to the expectations of the Lord Jesus. And that means they, there were 3,000 souls added to their number. That's in a word of arithmetic. They were keeping track. They knew who the people were. And what did those people do? They were devoted to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. Fellowshipping. That word koinonia, a, a shared life experience that you voluntarily enter into. And so perhaps it's just helpful for us to think as the Sunday morning is approaching that we have had so many of you return and come to gather and to regather again after this crazy 18, 19, almost 20 months we're into now of this COVID uh, craziness that's happening. This is a safe place to meet. Frankly, it's, I think it's one of the safest places you're going to find. We have this wonderful air exchange system the folks put in a while back. We are social distancing. We have a limited number of people here. Everybody's wearing masks all the time. I think the vast majority of people have had their one or two vaccinations and we don't spend a lot of time together and we don't spend a lot of time interacting together. This is a, a safe place as we know how to make it. And under God, there's something about well, there's something about that godly desire to see that a church that assembles, that gathers, is the goal and the call of the Lord Jesus for his people. So let me just put it this way. Maybe it's time to come back. Maybe this Sunday will be the Sunday that you go to downthroughbaptistchurch.com, make a reservation, and show up with the people of God again. We'd love to see that. We'd love to see more of us together more often to the glory of God. So a few thoughts for you. Again, be prayerful for one another that God would give us the kind of desires that would bring much glory to him and frankly, much joy to ourselves. Lord willing, see you Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Cheers.